Obsessive behavior is often an early warning sign that something else is wrong. Nobody should have to go through this. A construction crew they found Dorothy's remains. Can you imagine losing your daughter or mom for four years and not know what has happened, then finding her remains? What would go through your mind? Who was the killer? Keep watching to find out. Today we will be looking at the truly tragic case of Dorothy Jane Scott. Dorothy Scott was born on 23rd April 1948 in California to Jacob Scott and Vera Scott in Anaheim, CA. In 1976, Dorothy gave birth to a son, Sean. His father abandoned them before his birth and never came back. She lived with her son, Sean, and aunt in Anaheim, CA. Dorothy, 32, was a secretary for two jointly owned Anaheim stores. One store sold psychedelic items and the other a head shop. She was an introvert, so she mostly preferred staying at home while the workers cared for the store. Dorothy was a devoted Christian and she disliked drinking and smoking. Dorothy's parents also lived in Anaheim, so they often babysat their grandson when Dorothy was at work. Dorothy was pleased with her life and had no boyfriend. One day, Dorothy spent time with her four-year-old son and was busy with house chores when she received a phone call. Some guy on the call didn't reveal his identity but wanted to keep talking to her. She was confused, so she hung up the call. The next day, Dorothy received the call again, and this time, the guy professed his love for her. She took it as a prank call and hunged up. After that, she would often receive calls from this guy, who knew where she lived, how she looked, her son, and her jobs. Dorothy asked the guy who he was, but he refused to reveal his identity. The man told her to go outside because he had a special gift there. She went outside, there was no one, but she saw a dead rose on the windshield of her car. This scared her and she quickly went back inside. Right then, she received the call from the stalker. This time, he was furious and he threatened her that he loved her like crazy but now he will take her somewhere alone and cut her up into bits so no one would ever be able to find her. Dorothy was horrified, so she told her parents about the unidentified man's threatening call. It was challenging to find out about his identity. She decided to buy a handgun to protect herself. She knew she was weak and can't defend herself, so she decided to take a karate lesson. She learned different techniques to protect herself. Dorothy was a very caring and sympathetic woman. She would often go to her stores to check if everything was okay. On 28th May 1980, Scott went to the store at 9 p.m. and held a meeting that went pretty well. During the meeting, she noticed that one of her co-workers, Conrad Bostron, looked unwell. After the meeting, she asked Conrad to which he responded that he had no idea, but he had pain in his arm and a slight fever. Dorothy got concerned, so she quickly asked another co-worker, Pam Head to help Conrad out of the store. She was wearing a black scarf that she changed to red before leaving, and three of them got in the car to take him to the hospital. They reached UC Irvine Medical Center, and Conrad was taken to the emergency room. After checking him, the doctor said Conrad had suffered a black widow spider bite which is why his arm swelled. She was distraught for Conrad and remained in the hospital all the time. At 11 p.m. Conrad was discharged from the hospital and given a prescription to take the medicines and relax at home. Dorothy told Head that she wanted to use the restroom before going home. It took her a few minutes in the restroom and she came back. She told Head to bring Conrad to the parking lot. Until then, she would get the car because Conrad was still feeling unwell and found it hard to walk. Dorothy went to the parking lot to bring the car while both co-workers took medicine and came out. After waiting for half an hour, they saw Dorothy's car racing toward them. The headlights were so high that both Pam and Head couldn't see who was in the driving seat. The vehicle was at such a high speed that both of them thought that maybe Dorothy didn't see them standing there. They waved to let her know that they were standing there, but the car sped past and took a sharp turn out of the parking lot. Pam and Head thought that Dorothy might have got a call from home and went in a hurry because of her son. They both took a taxi and went back home and thought that she would call them and inform them why she had to leave in such a hurry. When they didn't receive a call from her for several hours, they had to report Dorothy missing. Dorothy's parents were worried for their daughter and asked the police to help them find her. They waited for days to receive any news about her, but nothing was found. 
after a week of Dorothy's disappearance, her parents received a call from that unknown person once again. This time he would call them after every few hours. Once he was sure there was no man at home, he told Dorothy's mother that he had her and hung up the call. Dorothy's mother informed the police about the call. They tried to find out where he was calling from for the next few days, but he would hang up the call after every few minutes. Once Dorothy's father was at home and received the telephone call, he hanged up the call as soon as the guy on the other side heard a man speaking. The stalker was too coward to show up and reveal his identity. He wasn't satisfied annoying Dorothy's parents, so he decided to call the front desk at the Orange Country Register, who released Dorothy's missing story. This time, the stalker revealed something that was heart-rendering and tear-jerking. He confessed that, I killed her. I killed Dorothy Scott. She was my love. I caught her cheating with another man. She denied having someone else. So I killed her. Police were informed about the stalker's phone call. The stalker also revealed that he knew that on 28th May, Conrad Bostron was sick and suffering a spider bite and what Dorothy was wearing, and that she changed her black scarf to a red scarf before leaving for the hospital. He told them that he talked to Dorothy when she was in the hospital before Conrad was discharged. But Head said Dorothy never left Conrad's side. She was with him all the time though she did go to the restroom but came back in a few minutes. The authorities concluded that this was the guy harassing the family and may have kidnapped Dorothy Scott. On 29th May at 4.30 a.m., police informed Dorothy's parents that her car was found burning in an alley about 10 miles from the hospital. There was no sign of Dorothy and her kidnapper anywhere, nor any clue. Days became months and months became years. Dorothy Scott never came back. Her son was now eight years old. He would still wait for his mom and talk to his grandparents about his mom. On 6 August 1984, a construction crew worked on site about 30 feet from Santa Ana Canyon Road. While working, he discovered decayed human bones. The construction crew discovered human and dog remains. The bones were partially burned after a bushfire had swept over the area in 1982. Near these bones, a turquoise ring and watch were also found. The bones were collected and taken to the hospital to identify. On 14th August, the dental records were able to identify the remains as Dorothy's. This overwhelming news broke the family and it took them very long to accept that Dorothy was no more in the world. They wondered what happened to her and how difficult her last moments were. Because the bones were burned and were in bits, the autopsy could not ascertain the cause of her death. But after the news broke that Dorothy's remains were found, the family received two more calls from an unidentified male who kept asking for Dorothy. There was no usable forensic evidence, and as of today, the case remains unsolved. That's a wrap for today. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up, share, and subscribe to the channel to see our latest content.